George Cooper coming in to make the stop for the Baltimore Stars. Take a look at the starting line for the Bandits. Fike, Pitcock, Foot, Newton, Piles, and the tight end is Marvin Harvey. Out of the backfield, Reeves, of course, the quarterback. Anderson and Boone, the setbacks. The wideouts are Trevilian and Gillespie. First down, Tampa Bay at their own 35-yard line. Out of the eye formation, Gillespie in motion to the right. Reeves fakes the handoff. Pass is batted down over the middle, intended for Gary Anderson and William Fuller. The big left end of the Philadelphia Stars got his hands up to swap that one to the ground. Bandits have never lost a preseason game. Defensively, the Baltimore Stars, the ends are Fuller and fielder Dave Ofar at nose guard. Linebackers, Jamison, Johnson, Mills, and Cooper. The defensive backs are Garcia Long, Harris, Hardy, and Lush. Second and ten, Tampa Bay. Split backfield. Reed sets. Pass. Gary Anderson is finally able to hang on to it. Well, he juggled that one around like a hot potato and finally maintained possession. So Anderson pulls it in, and uh, the Bandits will have a third and three at their 42-yard line. And we'll show you again here, John Reed's dropping back, and he's going to find Gary Anderson a little crossing pattern. And uh, I know Coach Spurrier wished that he didn't bounce that ball around, but it was great concentration for him to bring it in. It came off his chest, and he just concentrated on it, brought it down for a nice game. John Reeves in his 13th year as a pro quarterback. Last week against New Jersey, he guided the Bandits to scoring drives of their first three possessions, completed seven of 14 passes. Gary Anderson looking for running room, trying to get the first down yardage around the right side. His forward progress may give it to him. This might be close. It's going to be close. Of course, it all depends on the spot right here, and they do say that he has it. So Anderson picks up the first down yardage. He's involved on both offensive plays for the first down on their first drive of the afternoon. Just underway, if you're just joining us here on Channel 44. Bandits have a first down at their own 45-yard line. In the backfield, fullback Greg Boone out of nearby Duke University. Gary Anderson out of Arkansas, the tailback. Marvin Harvey now goes to the left side, the tight end. Reeves gets to Anderson. Nice hole on the left side. He followed his left guard for a big enter across the midfield mark into Baltimore Star territory before Billy Hardy, the strong safety of the Stars, came up to make the stop. Just a fullback lead out of the eye formation right here. And watch some quick feet right here on that little stutter step. But you can't teach that. You have to be born with it. Boy, both Boone and Anderson saw limited duty last week against the general spread, but... We know what they can do. Last season, each rushed for over 1,000 yards, becoming one of the few pro running back tandems to accomplish that feat. Second, third, second down and two now on an eight-yard pickup by Boone. Pass is complete to Gary Anderson for the first down, and he's forced out of bounds at the Baltimore 41-yard line. Making the force play on Anderson was George Cooper, the inside linebacker for the Baltimore Stars. So the Bandits pick up a couple of first downs. They have driven to the Baltimore 41-yard line. We're just picking on this 3-4 defense, running enough to keep them honest and throwing these short underneath routes and moving the ball very effectively. First down at the 41 of Baltimore. In motion, Willie Gillespie to the right. Blitz. They pick it up nicely. Reeves unloads it over the middle, and it's complete to Eric Trevilian. He's at the 20. Fumbles the ball. Loose ball, and falling on it is Marvin Harvey. Well, Trevilian was smacked at the 20-yard line, coughed up the football, but the tight end, Marvin Harvey, was there to fall on it. And now watch where experience pays off on this replay. Watch John Reeves. He sees the blitz coming here. The fullback, tailback. Gary Anderson picks up the blitz. John knows they're in man coverage, and he's got a man wide open on a crossing pattern right there. And that's what experience or 13 years as a quarterback will do for you. First down, Bandits at the 16-yard line of Baltimore. Eric Trevilian caught nine touchdown passes in 1984 for the Bandits. Reeves will air it out on the first down. Complete to E.T. on the far sideline of the 10-yard line. Forward progress might get him to the nine. Garcia Lane, the left quarterback, coming up to make the stop for the Stars. They are really banged up at the Stars' defensive secondary, Freddie. They have two starters, Sutton and Gibson, who are not even suited up today. And Garcia Lane, second-year man out of Ohio State, has moved from right corner to left corner. R.L. Harris, 
moves into right corner for Lane. So they've really had to do a lot of shucking and jiving to that defensive secondary. And when they're healthy, this is a very strong defense, but uh, they're being exploited right now. All of the doghouse defense. Second down and three. Another motion play with Gillespie. This is Gary Anderson looking for some room. Stop there, coming up to make a nice play defensively was R.L. Harris, who we just mentioned that moved in at right cornerback for the Stars. He cuts down Anderson at about the five-yard line. And I believe he's going to pick up a first down right there, and that is just t uh, awfully tough on a defense. When somebody gets that first down inside the five, now they've got four cracks at it, and all they have to do is average slightly over a yard a carry in order to get a touchdown. Of course, knowing bandit ball, we may see this one go in the air. An impressive drive here against the Stars' defense. Willie Gillespie checks out of the huddle. Two tight ends now. Jerry Price comes in along with Marvin Harvey. First and goal at the four-yard line of Baltimore. On the split backfield, Greg Boone, the fullback. Boone grabbed around the ankles, lowers his head, and pulls his way down to around the two-yard line is where they will spot the ball. Cracking him head on was Sam Mills, the inside linebacker of the Baltimore Stars. And we've got a mismatch here. Gary Anderson's going to try to block on this outside linebacker defensive end, and you see he doesn't make much of a block, but uh, Boone tries to bring it on, and that's the key to that outside game. Either the uh, tailback or the fullback has got to cut down that containment and let the uh, ball carrier get outside. From the two, it is second and goal now for Tampa Bay. Moving the ball smartly downfield. Described again at their own 35-yard line. In motion, Trevelyan, the give is to Boone. He doesn't get it. He's cracked. No, law, no gain on the play. Sam Mills again. That headhunter, I'll tell you, Mills is tough. He's only 5'9", 225 out of Montclair State. But he is a real workhorse in the middle of that uh, defensive backfield. I tell you, he got down there with Greg Boone. You know, Boone's not too tall, but that guy got underneath him. Two 5'9 players, and the linebacker got the best of that one. So that brings up a third and goal call now for the Bandits. They give him a yard on the uh, forward progress, so they mark it at the one-yard line. Two tight ends in there for the Bandits. John looking into the end zone, floats it to the corner. It's complete for a touchdown to Eric Trevelyan, who caught nine last year and caught one, a deflection for a touchdown last week against the New Jersey Generals. E.T., who was injured late last season with that fractured fibula, but still finished sixth in the league, tying Marvin Harvey for those honors with 70 receptions, catches his second touchdown in as many weeks for the Bandits in preseason. He's tough to, uh, down there at 6'4 in the end zone. He's the guy you want to look for and take advantage of that height. Zenit and Rosician, who was 55 of 59 last year in the extra point department. Off Gillespie's home, splits the uprights, and the Bandits draw first blood here in Charlotte against the Baltimore Stars. Let's show you this touchdown again now. E.T. gets a little help from Brodsky out here. There's two wide receivers to the right of your screen. Brodsky picks one of the defensive backs, and that enables E.T. to come wide open. And that defensive back is, is not real happy with Brodsky. We'll be right back with the score. The Tampa Bay Bandits 7, the Baltimore Stars nothing. Fourth year in a row. New test results in? Yeah, yes. Uh, for the fourth year in a row, in an independent test, over a thousand people were asked which 19-inch TV had the best overall color picture. Please, don't drag it out. Just give results. Majority of people pick Sylvania Superset over Sony again? Yes. And over RCA and Zenith, too. Nandeska! Kol Nandeska! And here's Nobody where you beats the, the king. Superset. Can you find the office here? Hello, Mary. Move a little closer. A letter for me. Still can't? Here it is. Introducing GTE MobileNet, the car phone service that turns any car into a highly productive office. We provide the phones and the service, and you make and receive calls the same way you do on your office phone, so you can get more work done. In fact, you may get so much done by the time you get to work, you may not have to go to work. GTE MobileNet, the car phone service everyone's talking about. Zenit Andrusician will tee it up for Tampa Bay on the kickoff. On the bench, you look at E.T. Eric Trevelyan just got the touchdown pass, culminating an 11-play drive that took 6.29. The Bandits march 65 yards to go on top, 7 to nothing. 
James Evans is the deep man for the Baltimore Stars, but it's going to roll up to one of the up men. Short kickoff by in position. And on the return after the 41-yard line is R.L. Harris, a defensive back for the Baltimore Stars. So Chuck Busina and company will start with pretty good field position here in Charlotte this afternoon on their first drive. And there's the franchise. Kelvin Bryant checks into the huddle along with the quarterback. See the line is Conwell, Gilbert, Oates, Kaminsky, and of course Big Herb Eatman. Ken Dunnick is the tight end. Chuck Busina, seven-year veteran at quarterback for Baltimore. Hands it off to Bryant on his first carry of the day. Slips down and good pursuit that time. Coming in was number 77, Mike Butler, former Green Bay Packer. Well, there is no doubt that that man is the veteran ramrod of this Baltimore offense. Kelvin Bryant, one of the true homegrown stars in the United States Football League. Last year rushed for over 1,400 yards. Bandits defense. There you see the defensive backs. As we set the Bandits D for you. Second down. And let's call it nine. Makes to Bryant. You say to sets. It's complete. That's Ken Dunnick, the tight end, who was forced out of bounds on the far side around the 36-yard line. Dunnick in his fifth year out of Memphis State. We'll show it to you again. It's a little crossing pattern underneath the zone defense by the tight end. There he goes in front. Now he's getting away from the linebacker. A little safe pass in front of the linebackers. Pretty good battles going on for starting spots in the Bandits defense. And a couple of linebacker spots. We'll get into that a little more later. Third down and four down as the Bandits would like to stop the Baltimore Stars in their first drive of the afternoon. Kelvin Bryant, the lone setback, dives across the 40 to the 41. And it's going to be awful close. Really depends on the spot of the ball. Just trying to fool the defense on that last play by stretching everything way out. One running back in a third and about five passing situation. But I don't believe the defense was fooled, and I think they may have to measure. Credit James Harrell, outside linebacker, number 50 right there with a the stop on Bryant. And the chains may come out. It would appear that he is a little bit short. Well, they won't bring the chains out. He is a good half yard short. So it'll be a fourth down. They will for Baltimore. Won't. Here they come. Right? Well, here they come. They changed their mind again. Jim Mora had a right to request it. He did. And it is... Uh, Maybe a foot short. So it is a fourth down facing the Stars, and the punting team will come on. So the Bandits defense looking pretty impressive here on their uh, first opportunity to show their stuff this afternoon. And standing back around his 25-yard line is Sean Landetta. His second year out of Towson State. Steve Carter back to receive for the Bandits. Long snap counts. Landetta, high but short, signaling for a fair catch as Carter gets out of his hands. They dive for the ball at the five. It rolls into the end zone, and I think Philadelphia recovers for a touchdown. James Evans may be the person who fell on the ball, number 45. The stars come up with it. No, it's number 42. James Caver, a wide receiver, a special teams player. But Steve Carter, he just misjudges the football. He touched it. Uh, if he lost the ball, he really should have gotten away from it. But uh, there you see it. No chance that it gets bumped again. It's going to go in the end zone right there. And uh, that's an easy touchdown, cheap one, type you don't like to give up. So Baltimore gets on the board on the fumble. David Trout will come on to try and tack on the extra point. That's unfortunate because Carter had been playing so very well. But it's an error a young player is uh, want to make at times. Carter is a rookie out of Albany State. And I know nobody feels worse about the fumble than he does. Here's Crouch Crowd for the extra point. It is no good. May have been partially deflected. Couldn't really tell from this angle, but Trout misses the extra point, so the Bandits get a little break there. They lead 7-6, to six and we'll be right back with 6-13 remaining in the first quarter. Well, Steve Carter and Bobby Futrell will be back to receive David Trout's kickoff as Baltimore puts six points on the board rather easily on the uh, fumble recovery, which rolled into the end zone and was covered by James Caber, the wide receiver, for the touchdown. 
And let's see if they, Fred, it'd be interesting to see if they kick it right back at Carter right now. He's on the far side of the field. He will receive the kickoff. He's got to be thinking about the last one. He drops it at the five, out to the ten. Looks for a hole, spins. Well, the ball is loose. But I think the Bandits may have recovered this one. They're going to have to wait until they sort it out, however. The Stars signal that they have it. Oh, that's just got to be terrible for Carter when it rains at four. And Baltimore comes up with another fumble by Steve Carter. And we'll show it to you again. He's got to be nervous and a little anxious. The ball's on the ground. He knows he's in trouble. He almost turns it into a good run right here, and he's trying to get that extra yardage, and somebody strips the ball loose. Anthony Anderson is the star who pounced to the ball at the bottom of the heap. And Baltimore with excellent field position at the Tampa Bay 22-yard line. Well, those kind of mistakes can really hurt you. After a smart-looking opening drive and jumping out to a 7-0 lead, suddenly the Bandits find themselves with their backs to the wall here. Still leading 7-6, but Baltimore with a chance to put some more points on the board. 42 remaining in the first quarter. Chuck Busey to the quarterback. Former Tampa Bay Buccaneers sets up. Over the middle, it's intercepted by Tampa Bay. Coming up with it is Kelly Kirschbaum. And a timely interception as they trade turnovers. Gives the Bandits a little breathing room. That's a real break for Tampa Bay as Kirschbaum makes his... Watch Kirschbaum on left your screen. They're going to try to go to the tight end Dunnick right here. They're trying to split this zone, but Kirschbaum just makes a great drop and a great catch for a linebacker. I mean, he had to go up in the air, a circus catch. Kelly did not have an interception last season, but he did lead the team in tackles. So Kelly Kirschbaum, the sixth-year veteran out of Kentucky, picks off Yusita's pass. So look at Chuck you see it on the sidelines and the Bandits are back on offense at their own seven yard line. Anderson and Moon are the setbacks. Reeves calling the signals. Last year was the fifth rated quarterback in the USFL. The end zone to Anderson. Little juke step by Gary. He gets out to around the 14 yard line following a good block by Chuck Pitcock, the left guard. Larry McCoy, second-year linebacker, forcing Anderson out of bounds at the 14. He'll bring up a second down and four. Just a little screen pass, and it really was executed nice by the tackle and the yard Pitcock on that side, and they were able to hold their blocks long enough to give uh, Gary a little breathing room there. Overall, the Bandits' offense was rated fourth in the league last year. Reeves became only the second useful quarterback to pass for more than 4,000 yards in a single season. Marvin Harvey shifts to the left side, tied in. Gary Anderson digging. Well, he explodes through a hole, and he picks up enough yardage for the first down out across the 20 to around the 23. Really has great acceleration when he gets the ball. We'll show it to you again right here. It's a trap. There's a guard coming in there. Boone's blocking the linebacker. Look at that big guard sealing it off to the inside. Newton, number 61, I believe. And uh, they ran that play earlier in the other drive. They've had a real good success with that play early in the ball game. Well, Gary Anderson, of course, is a real double threat. He was 10th in the league in rushing, 8th in receiving last year. Do it all. Former Arkansas Razorback. First down, Bennett. Here's Moon on the play break. And he gets out to make it the 25-yard line, of course. And Mills meets Greg Boone again. These two may get acquainted several times out there today, Brett. I imagine they will before the first half is over with. That was sort of a misdirection. They pulled the guard one way and pulled the other guard in the opposite direction, trying to throw the linebackers off and only gained a couple of yards. What do you think about guys like Boone and Mills? 2-5-9, but they don't know it, do they? No, they don't. In their heart, they're about 6-9. Mills was an all-USFL performer in his rookie season. Once again, Harvey shifts to the left side. Second down and eight for the Bandits. From their 25, John Reeves sets up. Straight drop back. Far sideline. Pass is complete to Willie Gillespie. And Gillespie has the first down. 36-yard line of the Bandits. Little hey, Willie G. Here's another little guy. He's only 5'9 as well. Now we'll watch John drop back here. He's going to fake to hold the linebackers, and he sees Gillespie out here on a little tight hook. Now watch this move after he catches the ball. He doesn't have a first down until he fakes that defensive back out right there, and he pulls it in. And just a beautiful catch and a, a nice play. You see it right here. He's going to drive upfield. He turns in and hooks right there. Here comes the ball, and he's short but turns it up. Well, take a look at this offensive set, will you? This is the Emory and Henry shift. 
which the Bandits used in a game against Arizona last year. And you saw the uh, confusion on the part of the Stars defense there. And as Craig Moon winds up with the ball. They Tell us a little bit about this. Well, they, they have two guards in the center, and then they have a tackle, a tight end on one side, and a tackle and a split end, trying to stretch a defense out. They're about 15 yards apart. That time they gave it to the fullback. They're going to go back to it again here, and we may see them throw it to Gary Anderson. John is going to read the defense, and they really don't know how to react at this point. I think he'll throw it to Gary Anderson. All right. Let's see what Reeves does. He does. He comes to Anderson on the near side. Good blocks. Anderson explodes across the midfield mark. Has the first down at the Stars' 48-yard line. That is bandage ball. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth. We'll show it to you on the replay. See, the defense hasn't adjusted out here. There's only one man, and they've got inside position on him. And Gary Anderson now is in the open field, and he makes a nice first down out of it. Well, Steve Spurrier borrowed that uh, page out of the playbook at Emory & Henry, a little college in uh, the corner of Virginia, over near the Tennessee border. They use that a lot, and we're going to see it one more time. Well, if it's working, go with it again. Let's see how the stars adjust this time. This time, they go to Boone. It's maybe a yard straight up the middle. Fred, do you think that's a better formation to run out of or pass out of? Well, it, of course, depends on what the defense does. And in that time, I think they were uh, they were ready for the run, obviously. But uh, they have a double pass out of this formation. And uh, if the defense uh, overreacts to Gary Anderson, uh, he can throw the ball across field to the wide receiver or to the split end on that side. Larry Brodsky and now at number 82 at the bottom of your screen is a wide receiver. Gary Anderson comes out for a breather. Second down and eight. About a minute left in the first quarter. The Bandits lead it 7-6. to six. Reeves going deep for Marvin Harvey. It's complete to the big tight end over the middle. Harvey dragged out at the 15-yard line. Harvey, an all-USFL second-team performer last year, and he's a load, 6'3", 227. And watch him rip this zone defense apart. Out there to your right is Harvey and Eric Trevelyan. Trevelyan runs about a 10-yard out, pulls the cornerback off, and it leaves Harvey wide open. And you see that cornerback saying, boy, I went with the wrong man. Reeves is now 8 of 9 here in the first quarter, which has 30 seconds remaining. First down at the 15-yard line. Check that. Yes, the 15 of the Baltimore Stars. Reeves to the end zone. Tipped. Incomplete. Willie Gillespie was there, and breaking up the play defensively was the left quarterback, Garcia Lane. Good defensive play by Lane. Well, they're going for all the marbles right here. Brodsky's out there, too, and here's where they break away. And he was open, really. John overthrew the ball. Should have been a touchdown. I can say that about John since uh, <laughs> I, I helped him survive his days as a Gator. That's right. The former Gators. Second down to 10. That stopped the clock with 20 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Trevelyan now splits wide to the bottom of your screen. Three receivers in there. Breeze sets up. Marvin Harvey, touchdown. 15 yards from John Reeves. So... Marvin Hardy, who caught nine touchdowns last season for Tampa Bay and tied E.T. with the lead of this team with 70 as his first TD of the preseason. They get a mismatch here. They've got Harvey on a linebacker, and you'll see him come into your screen right here, and he is just beating the linebacker to death. He's three yards behind him. Easy touchdown. 15-yard strike from John Reeves, who has looked extremely sharp in the Bandits' first two possessions. Led the Bandits to three touchdowns and three possessions at the start of last week's game. He almost looks to be in midseason form, Fred. I'm telling you, I don't know how he's doing. It looks like he's getting younger instead of older. And recall that Reeves uh, did not report to practice until about a week late because of his contract dispute. Zenit and position tax on the extra point, and with 16 seconds remaining in the first quarter, the Bandits have maintained their lead, or we should say widened their lead, to 14 to 6. We'll be right back. Danger enters the water when you wash with chlorine bleach because chlorine bleach can attack fibers, weaken them, and cause clothes to die an untimely death. Stop the senseless slaughter of America's clothes. Whiten your clothes with chlorine bleach, the safe great white. 
Until now, effective cough relief usually came in a spoon. Now, Mediquel announces the end of the spoon. New Mediquel Chewy Cough Squares for cough relief so strong it lasts eight hours long. Mediquel took a powerful liquid cough medicine and concentrated it into soft, chewy squares. Each dose relieves coughs up to eight hours, twice as long as regular strength liquids. The end of the spoon. New Mediquel Chewy Cough Squares. Cough relief so strong it lasts eight hours long. Well, following the interception by Kelly Kirschbaum, the Bandits march 93 yards, a 10-play drive. About half of the drive was out of the Emory and Henry split. Took 5.28 off the clock. John Reeves completing it 15 yards to Marvin Harvey. The Bandits widen their lead to 14-6. Reeves is now 10 out of 12 for 115 yards. Here's Adversition's kick, fielded at the 13-yard line. Another pretty good return by the Stars. This is Tom Donovan, a wide receiver, getting out to around the 30-yard line. So Chuck Fusina, once again, will have pretty good field position. Sankar Mantuts, number 55, Bandits linebacker, coming in to make the stop on Donovan. So we will see the Stars offense, which has not been on the field much at all here in the first quarter. And that is, in fact, the end of the first period at Charlotte Memorial Stadium. We will be right back at the start of the second quarter with a score. The Tampa Bay Bandits, 14, the Baltimore Stars, 6. For Eyewitness News, weeknights at 10. One of the young fans here at Charlotte looking on and a loving bandit ball. on a beautiful February afternoon. Stars take over at their own 33-yard line. First down as we begin the second quarter. Tampa Bay leads 14 to 6. Chuck Fusina, seventh-year veteran out of Penn State. Kelvin Bryant goes nowhere. Boy, the Bandits defense racked up. The league's number two rusher on that carry. Really played it tight that time in the middle. Kelvin Bryant was just phenomenal last season. Second leading rusher in the USFL. Had a great playoff series when he rushed for over 100 yards in all three games. Fusina, of course, the former Tampa Bay Buccaneer at quarterback. What a season Fusina had. He wound up the top-rated quarterback in the league for 1984. Then capped it off by being named the most valuable player in the championship game at Tampa Stadium. Second down and eight. Fusina. Pass is almost intercepted again by Tampa Bay. Alvin Bailey, the veteran quarterback out of Alcorn State, had his hands on it. And we'll show you to you again. It's a drop here. It looks like a little curl pattern. The cornerback is deep on that side. They're trying to throw to Harris over here. And watch Bailey make his break on the ball. Nice play. They really, really, if you've seen it through into the coverage, there are three red jerseys right there. And uh, Bailey almost had the interception. Bandits defense came to play today, too. They have looked very sharp. Third down and eight. Stars have it at their own 34-yard line. Overall, the Bandits' defense was ranked eighth in the league last year. Kelvin Bryant is the lone setback. He releases. Fusina goes deep and overthrows his intended receiver, which was Anthony Allen, third-year player out of Washington. And watch this now. Fred Nordgren, they're in a four-man line. They want to put more pressure on the quarterback. And watch this second and third effort. Nordgren's going to fall down. Watch him hit the quarterback right there and force a bad throw. Bandits defensive fronts, Mike Clark, Ron Simmons, Northgren, and Mike Butler playing very aggressively and putting a lot of heat on Fusina. Sean Landetta drops back for his second punt of the afternoon, and Steve Carter will get another opportunity. Landetta with a beautiful spiral sends Carter back to his 14-yard line. I bet he wraps this one up like a bread basket out to the 28. Nice return that time by the youngster. No, Randy, you were... Go ahead. We'll be right back after this message. Stay with us. Bandit Ball on Channel 44. First down for the Bandits. They will begin this drive at their own 29-yard line. And the new quarterback is Ron Sally. Rookie who played not too far from here in college at Duke University. Sally, pretty impressive at Tampa Stadium. Last Saturday night, he completed two out of three. This is the handoff to Ricky Williams, the Florida State Seminole. Digs out to about the 32-yard line. Well, the Bandits are in extremely good shape, you would think, at running back uh, again this year. Fred, with guys like Boone and Anderson, of course, up front. But your backups, Ricky Williams, Walter Holman, has looked extremely sharp. 
Marv Christian, Joel Blunt. Going to be a tough decision to make at uh, running back as to who to keep this year. Well, those are the nice decisions, you know, where you really have a close call and that uh, everybody is competing so tight. Second down and seven for the Bandits. Split backfield, Williams and Greg Boone. They both release over the middle. Sally, under some pressure, darts out across the 30. He'll have a first down at the 43-yard line where he steps out of bounds. A very heavy play by the rookie out of Duke that time who saw his receivers were covered downfield. Fred and tucked it in and uh, escaped the heat and picked up a first down on the run. A nice move, and he's probably the most versatile as far as mobility goes of the Bandits quarterbacks. But watch Jerry Price, the tight end right here. Watch him turn around and make a great block downfield. Nice move. Sally is 6'2", 205. So he's uh, a little on the large side for a quarterback. Take a look at his frame, and he's, he's pretty solid. The Bandits have a first down at their own 43-yard line. Again, Williams and Boone are the setbacks. Sally will go to the air for the no, a fake, and a nice one at that. Up the middle is Ricky Williams. Williams stopped by Sam Mills. Really in on almost every tackle. If he's not the primary tackler, he's in on an assist for the Baltimore Stars defensively. Well, the Bandits caught this star defense gambling. They brought both their outside linebackers and ran the quick opener, a quick draw, and uh, it was just wide open. Now Wilford Morgan is in there as the wide out at the bottom of your screen. Second year man out of Bethune Cookman and Larry Brodsky, former Miami Hurricane, at the top of your screen, number 82. Second down and four. Ron Sally calling the signals, fakes to Boone, pass is tipped. It was intended for Brodsky. Sam Mills again is in there for the Baltimore Stars with the tip. Boy, I tell you, this guy is ever, he's flying around the ball. Nice play by Mills. He takes a drop. He's going to the right on your screen and watch him get up at 5'9 and deflect that pass. So, Ron Sally will be faced with a third and four decision. Ball resting just inside the midfield stripe of the Tampa Bay Bandits. Brodsky comes out, and now Steve Carter comes in as the wide out, number 14. He's at the bottom of your screen. Third and four. Stars have a three-man line again. So they're going to gamble a little bit. Sally will keep it. And he's going to be caught for a big loss. Sally dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Coming in to drag him down was Todd Jamison, reserve linebacker for the Baltimore Stars. Trying to get outside on a reverse here and get Pitcock out or a bootleg, and the linebacker just comes across the line of scrimmage and stops the play before it ever gets started. The, the guard, Pitcock, could not get the linebacker on the ground or kicked out. Coming in to punt for the Tampa Bay Bandits is Mr. Double Duty, Senan Abrosition. Garcia Lane was the lone back, but it's going to go out of bounds short on the far side of the field. Not a great punt that time by Z. And the Stars will take over at about their own 30-yard line. We'll be right back with the score. Tampa Bay 14, Baltimore 6. One injury we should note on the Tampa Bay defense was uh, Tony Office, inside linebacker, has been bothered by a nagging injury all week. Freddie McAllister, number 46, started at inside linebacker for the Bandits today. Harold and Keith Clark, who are competing for that outside spot on the left side, are shuttling in and out. Here's Calvin Bryant on the sweep. Finally, forced out of bounds. We have a flag dropped in the Philadelphia Star backfield, however, so we may have a holding call coming up against Baltimore. Call it Philadelphia again, and uh, we apologize to you Philadelphia fans. But let's see what the penalty's all about. They're going to walk this one back. I think you got it pegged, Randy. I think uh, one of the offensive linemen was holding a defensive player. Here's the call. The Bandits lead 14 to 6. We're early in the second period. The penalty backs the Stars up to their own 22-yard line. Defensively, the Bandits have not allowed a first down in this game yet today. The Bandits have picked up eight in their two scoring drives. Pass is complete to Bryant. 